Global warming and its unpredictable weather are affecting one of the world's most critical waterways, the Panama Canal. Decreasing rainfall and rising temperatures are lowering its water levels, impacting ships' navigation through the canal's locks. Panamese lakes are now forecasted to hit historic lows in the summer of 2023, which will prompt authorities to implement drastic water-saving measures, as well as imposing some strict draft restrictions. While authorities prepare to grapple the uncertainties of climate change, one thing has become clear. Sustained low levels of freshwater in the Panama Canal critically reduce the number of ships, their drafts, and their cargo. This impacts not only global trade, but also America's power. What impact will climate change have over America's trade? And perhaps more importantly, in the case of a U.S.-China conflict in the Pacific Ocean, could the Panama Canal restrictions affect the U.S. Navy capability to redeploy in an emergency? But before diving deep into answering these questions, let's take a closer look at how scarce rainfall and rising temperatures affect the navigation on the canal. The Panama Canal is one of the most massive waterways on Earth. To connect the Atlantic with the Pacific Ocean, a series of locks move ships up and down through the whole width of the canal. This requires two full artificial reservoirs, the Alajuela and the Gatun lakes, to provide sufficient fresh water so that vessels can overcome the 85 feet elevation, or 26 meters, dividing the two oceans. New locks have been operating since 2016, allowing some of the world's larger cargo vessels, capable of moving up to 13,000 20-foot containers, to navigate the canal. This was crucial in making Panama a major hub of the world's trade, now accounting for something between 3.5 and 6% of global trade. However, all this trade relies on predictable rainfall. Each of the 12 100 years old Panamax locks requires around 50 million gallons of fresh water for every vessel passing through. So every time the canal's locks are opened, millions of gallons of fresh water flow back into the sea, eventually replaced by rainwater gathered in the two artificial lakes upstream. However, dry seasons in Panama are becoming more frequent, now occurring once every three years. Even now, the period between February and April 2023 has already been labeled as one of the driest rainy seasons in the last few decades. Near the canal and its two lakes, precipitation fell to only 50% of normal levels, and in some cases to just 25%. What is worrying is that these months coincide with the start of the rainy season and are essential in replenishing the lakes in view of the summer. Due to scarce rainfall, though, both the Alajuela and the Gatun Lakes water reservoirs have been critically depleted, forcing the Panama Canal Authority to revise their regulations on navigation. In June 2023, the Canal Authority issued stricter draft restrictions, lowering these from the normal level of 50 feet, or 15.24 meters, to 43 and a half feet, 13.41 meters. This means that if in normal conditions, when a vessel sits in the water of about 50 feet underwater clearance, now it only has 44. And these limits could be further lowered if the drought continues. A six foot draft difference might sound like a slight change, but it actually brings mammoth repercussions for the shipping industry. For starters, shipping companies are forced to load less containers to comply with the strict draft restrictions. This means that not only container ships carry on average 40% less cargo per transit, but it also means that to carry the full cargo of a single ship, two trips are required. The Panama Canal accounts for about 6% of global trade, with an average of 32 to 38 vessels making a voyage between the Atlantic and the Pacific Ocean each day. So what will happen if the artificial lake's water levels become critically low, making navigation more dangerous, like in the case of a ship getting stuck. From a trade point of view, these repercussions could be huge. Do you remember the six-day Suez Canal blockage of 2021? Well, for each hour of blocked navigation, 
That cost about $400 million in lost trade. In the case of Panama, at least 228 ships will be congested around the Panama Canal over a period of six days. This would greatly impact U.S. Asian allies like Japan, Korea, and Taiwan, which rely on U.S. oil and gas imports. Disruption to the navigation of these vital trade arteries could become a huge issue down the line, yet there are only just over a dozen news outlets covering the story, compared to the hundreds covering the U.S. providing Ukraine with cluster bombs. Thankfully, there is ground news, which helps you stay on top of global geopolitical events. Their website and app breaks down every news story so you can see all the sources reporting on it, their political biases, how factual they are, and who owns them. They even have a nifty AI-generated summary based on left-right-center differences. By simply comparing headlines, you can quickly see the geopolitical implications. In my experience, using ground news made reading the news and creating an informed opinion much more efficient. You can use my link, ground.news Komome, to get 30% off their unlimited access to all features I just showed you. The link is in the description. And now let's continue with the Panama Canal. The impact for the U.S. would be much greater, as around 73% of the stuck ships would be of origin or destined for the United States. Still, the most important loss might not be an economic one at all. It actually might be the weakened American military power projection across the Indo-Pacific. The Panama Canal is first and foremost a strategic infrastructure for U.S. power projection. During conflicts, the canal was used extensively to redeploy assets between different operational theaters. For example, in World War II, around 16,000 U.S. warships used the canal. About 20 years later, at the height of the Vietnam War in 1968, about 1,500 U.S. governmental ships traversed this waterway. This passage became so critical that at one point, around 90% of the ammo and 30% of the supplies used by troops in Vietnam passed through this canal. Not just during conflicts, but perhaps even more so during emergencies, the canal's strategic value has become even more essential. During the 1962 Cuban Missile Crisis, the Pentagon was able to scramble 30 ships from the Pacific Coast to the Caribbean in one single day. This is further emphasized by the words of four distinguished admirals who wrote a letter to dissuade President Jimmy Carter from handing over the Panama Canal. Our experience has been that as each crisis developed during our active service, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, and the Cuban Missile Crisis, the value of the canal was forcefully emphasized by emergency transits of our naval units and massive logistic support for the armed forces. As the United States seems to recognize China as its main strategic competitor, what would the role of the canal be in the event of a conflict or a 1962 Cuban-like crisis with Beijing? What if the warmer climate and drier months would coincide with the crisis, limiting the number of vessels able to traverse the canal? To answer that, we first need to look at similar historical cases and the last time the U.S. fought a peer-to-peer -peer conflict in the Pacific was during World War II when it faced Imperial Japan. At the onset of the Second World War, Japan presented a major naval threat to the U.S. Although German and Italian navies posed a credible capacity in the Mediterranean and North Seas, only the Imperial Navy could directly threaten U.S. shores. At the start of the Second World War, the Imperial Navy had about 238 capital ships in the Pacific against 345 U.S. Navy vessels, however, spread onto two oceans. Now, back to the present, China is also building up its navy under Xi Jinping's call for military modernization. Though around half the total tonnage of the U.S. Navy, the People's Liberation Army Navy, outtool the U.S. by about 60 warships. But perhaps the most important consideration in such calculations is that China only needs to worry about one ocean. To be more specific, a few regional seas. 
Whereas the US has its main fleet deployed on both the Atlantic and the Pacific Oceans and relies on the Panama Canal to coordinate between the two during emergencies. A 2022 Naval Postgraduate School publication gives us an estimate, based on World War II data, of the U.S. Navy reliance on the Panama Canal transit in a China conflict scenario. Based on these estimates, if a great power conflict were to happen with China, the transits through the canal for U.S. Navy ships only would skyrocket to more than 28,000 in one year, which is about double the current annual total transits. But the reality is, due to climate change and its impacts, navigation through the canal is already strained. Canal authorities have been decreasing the total number of ships that can safely traverse its locks per day. With draft approaching 43 feet, the Panama Canal Authority warned that the amount of ships capable of transiting the canal would be limited from the normal 36 to 38 to only 28 to 30 a day. In case of a conflict between the U.S. and China, the Panama Canal would be essential in redeploying forces from one theater to the other, particularly in an emergency situation. What if a new Pearl Harbor were to happen in Guam or in a U.S. naval base in Japan? And what if it were to take place when the canal is under severe drought? But without even considering a full-blown conflict, droughts and decreasing freshwater supplies at the Panama Canal can prove to be a considerable headache for Washington if routes are to be diverted through elsewhere. The problem is that there aren't that many comparably time-efficient alternatives. Before Panama, there were two other routes, the Northwest Passage via the Arctic Ocean and the Strait of Magellan, Cape Horn, towards Antarctica. These two are not only longer, but add weeks worth of navigation and making ships consume more fuel. Also, these are dangerous waters for the presence of storms, icebergs, and fog. And furthermore, the Northwest Passage relies on the 51-mile, 83-kilometer Bering Strait between the U.S. and Russia. Scrambling an aircraft carrier strike group for East Asia from the Atlantic Ocean would take longer without passing from the Panama Canal. Although nuclear-powered vessels like aircraft carriers and submarines can steam through without worrying about max cruising speed versus range, the U.S. Navy conventionally-powered vessels like destroyers and supply ships would still need to trade off speed for range. This makes the passage through the Panama Canal essential for these ships, especially during an emergency. For these reasons, the Canal Authorities and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers are working on a $2 billion plan to design and build a new water management system that could keep the canal operational for at least the next 50 years. However, to date, no work has begun. And this is a problem. Any substantial infrastructure improvement would take at least half a dozen years to be completed. With 2006 technology, it took almost 10 years to complete the work for the larger Neo Panamax locks. For the United States, maintaining unfettered access through the Panama Canal is both a critical factor for its economy and military power. If, on the one hand, the canal allows the connection between the U.S. East Coast with Asia, it also allows faster redeployment from one theater to another. In view of an increasing strategic competition with China, the Panama Canal offers the United States a unique strategic advantage of coordinating and redeploying all of its naval units with efficiency. This becomes especially important during an emergency, making it one of the most critical infrastructure in case of a conflict with China. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like and subscribing. If you particularly enjoyed this video, please check out our Patreon page and our super secret Discord chat. In any case, thank you so much for watching and we hope to see you at the next video. Ciao.